While police chases in movies often seem to be flawless, real-life pursuits can take unexpected turns. In Forsyth County, Georgia, a deputy decided to pull over an SRT Hellcat for allegedly weaving between lanes. The driver cooperated, but right when the officer went to ask for documents, he took off. With the time being 3 in the morning and little to no traffic, the police officer decided to chase the Hellcat driver and clocked him going at speeds of nearly 140 miles per hour. But there's no car faster than radios and backup, and eventually the driver gave up. Thankfully, no one was injured and the man at the wheel was 23-year-old Lamont Rashid, who was charged with attempting to elude, reckless driving, and six other counts of traffic infractions. A man named Josie from Wisconsin followed a girl in Walmart and touched her inappropriately. When the mother learned about this, she started chasing him across the store, but he was able to outrun her. That's when the police got involved and not only found out who the man was, but they were able to obtain surveillance footage. So they decided to pay an unexpected visit to the restaurant he worked at. Does this the name Josie ring a bell? Yes. Is he here? Yes. Okay. Yes. Well, I, like to uh, I gotta talk to him. I need to talk to you about an incident where you're my suspect. Okay, do you have any idea what I'm referring to? Okay, you ever been to the Onalaska Walmart? Times, okay. okay. Um, in May, we got a complaint from a parent and a young girl at the Walmart in Alaska that involves you. Anything ring a bell to that? Okay. Despite Josie denying being involved in this incident, one can see him tense up and get flustered when showed surveillance footage of himself at the store. Do you agree that this is you? No? Okay. Is this your truck? Definitely not. No? Is that something you've ever driven? No, I don't even have a topper on my truck. Okay. I just have a cab. You don't think that resembles you in the slightest? And well, as if there wasn't enough evidence already that he was guilty, he decided to run and add a charge of resisting an officer. Put your hands behind your back. <laughs> Dominic, you got taser? Traffic spikes are some of the most effective instruments for stopping cars, especially at high speeds, due to the rapid deflation causing the drivers to lose control of the car. But this suspect in a stolen vehicle against all odds was able to make it over 45 minutes on just the rims. Since the tires were blown out, he quite literally drove until the wheels fall off. Well, he is back on Olympic Boulevard as that uh, rim continues to light up the neighborhood. Finding halt here, it looks like, along Alvarado Street, just shy of Olympic Boulevard, and this might be it. He's pushing the pedal to the metal, and the car is not cooperating. It looks like this has come to a dead stop on Alvarado Street. Sadly for the KTLA anchor, the suspected manager to outsmart the news helicopter by noticing a similar car behind him and letting him go first through the tunnel. That's the wrong car. <laughs> but look, he stops quickly. And then there goes the car. <laughs> Thankfully, the police eventually was able to safely catch the person. Joel Delgado was being brought into a courtroom to face multiple charges that if found guilty would get him many years in prison. Little did the deputy taking him to court know that he had been planning his escape since his arrest, where he claimed he was injured because of an accident and needed a wheelchair. But to the deputy's surprise, just as he was escorting him into the court, Joel made a miraculous recovery and went on the run.
I'm gonna catch you, baby. To no avail, the deputy searched for the suspect in the area and even asked help from people going their way on the street. My nails put the radio game on. Hold on. Hey, what? The wheelchair do rain. <laughs> he had a neck brace on and all that. Did he really? Yeah. Uh, he didn't need that wheelchair very much, did he? Hell no. Thankfully, a few hours later, he was apprehended and taken back to the courtroom, in which he added a third degree escape to his charges. With there being more bicycles in the Netherlands than people, it's no surprise that it is the preferred method of transportation for the police. Surprisingly, this man was able to make the chase last 25 minutes. A police chase that looks straight out of a Hollywood movie happened when their getaway turned into a joyride with the suspects deciding to put the top down and even do donuts on the streets. It even got to the point that the suspects were taking pictures with fans and giving out high fives. ...for a few selfies and some high fives. Fortunately for police, the two surrendered without resisting and with no reported injuries. A thief fell victim to Los Angeles traffic and had to resort to his second getaway transportation, a longboard, which he didn't even know how to ride and decided to give up on it five seconds later. ...from officers in hot pursuit on foot. And as if things can't get any weirder, a hero in a red pickup truck blocks the sidewalk so he can't keep running when he's finally arrested. As police were closing in, the same red pickup cut him off and practically pinned him. What? And who's this random hero in the red truck? Louis from Operation Repo. Luis Lou Pizarro used to run around dramatizing car repossessions. What seemed to be the end of a long police chase with a train blocking the way, the suspect instead saw an opportunity and hopped on the train for a ride. Suspect hopped onto a train and for a short stint rode the train, then hopped off the train once it stopped, then got out and ran in a neighborhood. Now, CMPD's chopper has been searching the area, just looking and... When authorities started chasing a Rolls Royce on the freeway, they were quick to call the LAPD helicopter to track the driver's every move. And even ABC News Station had reporters live on the air as well. But in a completely unexpected turn of events, the Rolls Royce driver entered a street that doubles up as the entrance of a parking structure and disappeared. LAPD in this because clearly now he's made off the freeway. Right turn on a street. Now he's under that went, uh, walkway I think he there. Went into a parking structure. Well, it, it's a parking structure, or isn't that a street that comes out on the other side? So there, there we are. He he might be coming out here let's, let's if we if here. he's going to be there. But there, or he could have gotten out and gotten into that area. But it seems like this person has ditched that vehicle and may just be one of those few that gets away. Thankfully, no one was injured. But when several burglary suspects were fleeing the scene, a CHP officer made a textbook perfect pit maneuver that resulted in the chase ending safely. Enabling that vehicle for now, we'll see if there's anything left in the tank there. He has come to a complete stop. He is now facing southbound, face to face with these three CHP units. Head on now with it. After a man stole a vehicle, the police were instantly notified and started following the thief. But in the name of safety, police suspended a car chase in favor of following the subject via helicopter. Luckily, for for the LAPD, the man did not notice the helicopter and just drove around the city and ditched the stolen car on the street and calmly walked away like nothing happened. He's calling me out saying he got a suspect out there, red hat, shorts, getting out of the vehicle. And I can only, I don't know why those officers are swooping in. They might not understand that he's in the alleyway, but he has no kind of rush. He seems to be extremely calm about this and just kind of walking away from that vehicle. He jumped out of the car in the alleyway. Now police are coming up to this uh, officer and uh, the suspect is uh, not putting up uh, any fight as uh, he put his hands behind his head. According to Fort Worth police policy at the time, officers were not allowed to pass and block a vehicle during a chase because it can result in an accident. A suspected dealer of illicit substances knew this, and when he got caught instead of booking it, just slowly rolled down the highway for two hours. Sirens. They even put out spike sticks. No dice. Hours passed. Okay, this man was doing too much to just be arrested 10 minutes later. When an officer clocked a woman going 14 miles over the speed limit using his radar, he went to pull her over, and instead of stopping, the driver attempted to flee and allegedly went near 140 miles per hour until she had to stop because she ran out of gas. <laughs> Turn the music down. Why are you driving like that? 137 miles per hour? 
like, so then why did you pull over, or why did you go back westbound? She said to get away from the officer. She said she ran out of gas, so I should stop here. Oh shit. <laughs> That's unlucky. In perhaps one of the strangest police chases, a very civilized suspect drove at the speed limit and headed to a huge mall in an attempt to lose the cops inside the stores. I guess they were still closed. Maybe he's going to go back over to the car. What the suspect didn't think is that malls are usually not open at 8 in the morning. So he went back to his car where the chase continued. A couple of the yeah, oh, there's other ones okay. coming yeah. around. All right. Yeah, they're, they're going to try to box him in. Are they going to actually physically... In oh, oh, oh! oh. oh. That's not uh, good. The chase finally came to an end when the cops managed to guide him to a dead end in Chico Avenue. Looks like a dead end. Definitely oh. a dead end. Oh. So this okay. is now they've okay. got this guy kind of cornered. Uh, and uh, yeah, there's two uh, huge boulders right there. So he's boxed in. Yeah. In Phoenix, Arizona, an SUV capabilities were put to the test when a high speed pursuit went off roading on Salt River Reservation farmland. For everyone outside of Arizona right now, I bet you didn't think there was this much green. Again, they're. He's finding new dirt roads are saying now in the chat that this is a new commercial. If he could power, oh, he, he can't. We got, now we're running. We had multiple, we had a lot of people in there. Riding a horse can be legal in some states if the equestrian rides on the right-hand side of the road with traffic flow and follows all posted signage, but definitely not allowed on highways since the horse cannot follow the minimum speed limit and could be a hazard for everyone involved. A man riding a horse refused to stop for the police, and even a SWAT car had to be called. Someone's gonna get home, be like, honey, I was just really late. I'm just, well, why? Uh, well, there was a man on a horse riding on the express. No, okay, we'll turn on the news. Yeah, we're not making it up. Hopefully come to some sort of a conclusion uh, at this point. Uh and well, surprisingly, this is not the only time the police had to pull over someone with an animal. With two weeks ago in Nebraska, an onlooker reported a man driving with a full-size bull named Howdy Doody in the passenger seat. Surprisingly, he was let go with just a warning. The occupant of the vehicle was identified as Lee Meyer of Neely. The Watusi Bull's name was Howdy Doody. 